my name is Catherine, and I'll preface this with, um, I'm a first year and I haven't had con law yet. Um, but my question is, um, Jefferson in a, in a letter to Madison said that there shouldn't be a perpetual constitution and that was written right before the constitution was signed. In a lot of states, my state Virginia has had a number of different constitutions. Mm -hmm. Last year, my former professor, Larry Sabato, wrote a book called A More Perfect Constitution. Mm -hmm. And I also went to a convention that you alluded to um, where students kind of examined the 23 proposals that he mm -hmm. put out suggesting that the Constitution be looked at writ large and having a new constitutional convention mm -hmm. to um, examine such things as, you know, if a foreign-born citizen can become a president, expanding right. to a six-year presidency, and I won't go on. because All we'll kinds on. of changes. A parliamentary government. Right. A lot of way getting rid of the Electoral College. One could imagine... Each person might have their own wish list of lots of better ways, right? Right. And do you think that it would be good for we, the people, we, the alive people, not the people of 200 years ago, would have that um, privilege to go into a convention? And do you think that would be appropriate? Well, certainly Congress has the power under Article 5 to call a new constitutional convention. It's never done that, partly out of a kind of nervousness that we had a really lucky moment. With, with people like Madison and Hamilton and Jefferson, and they had a lot of different views, but boy, were they smart, and boy, were they patriotic, and boy, were they relatively selfless. I mean, they were operating not out of interest groups and lobbying and self-interest, and there, were, there was, I mean, sure, there were different interests represented and different class views, but it was a really lucky moment, and we ended up with a constitution that is the longest continuous constitution in the history of the world, calling it continuous, uh, maybe a bit of a, a bit of a slate of hand because in a sense we got almost a new constitution after the Civil War, though many of the original structural provisions remained. But I guess a lot of people have been afraid of what would happen when we put it all up for, for a vote. Now that means perhaps that they are not really true populists, they're not true Democrats, but then you do a poll and you write down the Bill of Rights without saying what it is. Uh, do you believe people should be free to express their own views regardless of how hateful the viewpoint? Hell no, say a significant number of people. Do you believe in the First Amendment? Oh yes, of course we believe in the First Amendment. Uh, do you believe that uh, the government should have to get warrants before searching the homes of suspected terrorists? Of course not, would say a substantial number of people. So there is some fear that in, in sort of the hot, ho hot house period of negativity that we seem to be perpetually living in, that although you could improve the Constitution along any of about a dozen vectors, what we would get if we opened it all up for grabs would be something none of us would be terribly happy about. Or maybe a majority would be happy, but it would be because a distinct minority would be completely screwed and squashed. 